Hey, what up, guys? It's your boy, DJ J. Steezy. DJ Jedi. And we are the Last Dope Podcast. Today's special guest, we got Mr. Ramon Castro. Also, the mayor of Brawley. Yeah, and also yeah. your primo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right out there. Yeah. And family's coming up, primo. Right. Maybe we're going to be somebody someday. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And you're already, um, you're already knocking down those doors, man. You know. I think so, man. We It took us a long time to get here. I mean... And I know I look young, but I told my wife I look like I'm 32 in my mind, right? <laughs> no, but it took us a while to get here, right? Uh, multiple times running, uh, and I've been busy for many, many years uh, in the, the community to making a lot of stuff happen. I think since I was like 15, I think my first community project that I organized and led, uh, 14 actually. And uh, here we are, 46 years old, finally get to be the mayor of Broadway, and we're up for re-election. Everything's pointing in that direction that we're going to get elected or reelected, mm. um, but you never know, right? So you guys, you got to keep working, keep working, keep working, right? And then uh, November fifth, we'll know, and if hopefully the community of Brawley, the city of the people of Brawley, say, yeah, you did good enough, and we'll give you another shot. And if not, well, then you know, hopefully you guys have an opening for a third, uh, for <laughs> a third uh, member here on your podcast. <laughs> so. yeah. Definitely, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, you know, once again, man, and we've told you before, um, thank you for your service. Okay. And um, so after the Marine Corps, bro, now, did you have the niche for politics? You know, because it's, uh, it's just politics. When it comes to politics, it's just one of those roads where it's just like, ugh, <laughs> you know, it's, um, it can be a grimy one. It's sticky and it's icky. That's for sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest with you guys. You know, you know what? You can get to do a lot of good things. There's a lot of good people in this world, but there's always the rest of it, right? But, you know, I, I you know me, pretty much, and people that know me and know me personally know that I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm like a little bit, like a, a little bit of a hothead, right? And I, I tend to react and I tend to, you know, do stuff. And when I was younger, you know, it used to be, you know, I used to end up in a lot of bar fights or whatnot. But now that, you know, as you're mature and you get older, you realize there's a system in place. Uh, to make things happen, and so you gotta engage. Right. You gotta you gotta play by the rules, and do things the way you're supposed to, and engage. And you truly want to make a change for your community. This is what it takes. You have to be involved. You have to learn to play the game, um, and get involved. Right. Run for office, or vote, or volunteer, right. whatever you do. But it's far too often, you know, I hear people like complaining. I'm upset. Oh, this or oh, Main Street or stop signs or what, whatever. Right. I get it. But it's the civic process, right? The civic engagement, the, the you know, being involved and being out there so that your voice is heard. And that's it. That's all it is with me. I decided to run because I was pissed off at something. I don't remember what anymore, but I was pissed off at something. I said, you know what, I'm running. Mm -hmm. And when I decided to give this up because I couldn't win, uh, somebody pissed me off. An elected official pissed me off. I said, you know what, I'm running again. I might not beat you, but I'm going to take you out. And that I did. Right. Well, we get to this point where you stop running for petty reasons and you start running because you have a plan of what you're going to do in your community. And so here we are four years into it. I think we've done great so far and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more things. I just need an opportunity. I need four more years. Four more years, man. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Um, there's a new measure in place. Yeah. Is that uh, measure J? Measure J, yes, sir. Um, Don't look at me. It's not Measure J. <laughs> <laughs> measure J, I've seen, um, I've seen the comments back and forth. You know, it's just like we're raising taxes, right? And it's just like, why can't we do it with the taxes that we have now? And I saw the, the video you guys posted on the city of Brawley. Um, for every penny that, that goes back to the city, right? Something like that. Yeah. Can you emphasize on it? Well, think about this. Uh, it's one dollar per penny, so you spend ten dollars. It's ten cents. If you spend, uh, you know, it's it's gonna a hundred dollars. It's one dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So think of how much you have to spend to actually make an impact on your pocket. But what I always tell people: Look, how many people do you know here take off to Costco? Oh, we need to go load up. And they go spend, you know, eight hundred bucks at Costco in one, you know, one quick trip, and every two weeks, right? Right. Al Centro has a half cent sales tax on top of the basic sales tax that's already there right and we don't mind paying it there in and out had sixty five thousand visitors from the city of Broadway. i know we're only like twenty seven thousand and something right but sixty five thousand visitors so you average it out about well, 15 bucks per person every time you visit that equals somewhere like forty eight thousand dollars in tax revenue that the citizens of Broadway leave in the city of el central so if you don't mind paying it somewhere else why do you mind paying it here 
look, we've done, we managed and balanced our budget. Mm -hmm. We've done a great job with that. But the people abroad are asking for more. And, you know, we how, how do we give you more? We take, you know, firefighters off of, you know, full-time firefighters, look for more volunteers. We remove more police officers. We pull from parks or we pull from streets, from public works. Where can we do it? You know, we have to manage the city and we have to manage it responsibly, but there's not enough money. There's just not. Mm -hmm. And we're at the point right now that if everything is getting more expensive, you know, the pension liabilities and whatnot, within five years, we have a very healthy reserve, but within five years, we'll start tapping into them. And within 10, year, within 10 years, we will have decimated those reserves, mm -hmm. meaning that within 10 years, we won't have a choice but to make cuts because we won't be able to pay for stuff. So right. this will get us on track to, one, spend more on the things that the people will probably want. We want better parks, right? We want to improve our lighting. We want shaded areas for our kids to play in. Um, we want our streets to look good. I mean, our streets look pretty good, actually. If you go to other cities, you already know, right? I was just in Long Beach, and no kidding, the main drag looked good. You go off to one of the side streets, and I was riding one of those scooters that you can rent, uh, uh, the bird scooters, I think, and I hit one of those little potholes. My hands came off. I was wearing a suit and shiny shoes. I <laughs> can't imagine what it looked like you're rolling off of that scooter. And I thought to myself, man, you might see that in Brawley here and there, but not like that, not in those conditions. And we're talking about a rich city like Long Beach, right? So we're actually doing pretty good. But in order to get to the next level where the city wants to be, so another city like, for example, things that they're doing in El Centro, um, Somebody asked me for a dog park, and I said, I would love to give that to you, but guess what? Give you a, It's like taking two police officers off of the street and giving you a dog park or taking away some of the youth programs or the senior center or, you know, all the things that we got to take away from just to give you a little doggy park. And so I would love to do that, but, you know, we need right. money for that. Um, I get it. You know, we have people always saying, it's just like, our Central's getting Jersey Mike's. They're getting a wing stop. You know, all we got is a Jamba Juice. <laughs> you know, so, and as you say, like, people do go to in and out And you said there's a big percentage that does, you know, from Brawley that heads out to El Central to go to in and out So how can we bring these businesses here to Brawley? Um, we've heard it in the past, you know, Brawley, Brawley is stuck in his old ways. You know, so how can we get up to the year 2024 25 26 you know what what is, what is it that we have to do to get these businesses here yeah look it's all based on supply and demand right we're a capitalist society whether we want to admit it or not no one's going to come here unless there's people who spend money on that right so how do you do it you improve your parks uh, you get creative with public private financing that's a whole nother level that i i don't completely understand every bit of the process because there are just different ways of get doing it right well, what you do is you hire really smart people that know how to do these things, and they'll explain it and break it down dummy style, right, for you to understand. But but really, you know, when you come to a city, and I'll give you an example. Uh, my kid, my daughter, uh, Caitlin, 15 years old, had a soccer tournament in Highlands, I believe, about a month and a half ago. Okay. So we go up there, and this is like uh, sports complexes has like 10 soccer fields, and there are approximately 15,000 people. Right. And it's a all weekend tournament, so people come in on Friday and they leave Sunday night. So think about how much money they left in hotels, you know, how much money they left in uh, disposable income, just in gas, all the tax revenue, uh, the burgers that they sold. I mean, there was no park, and I had to park and walk like two miles to get to that park. And so consider that when you start adding those little, those little improvements, you know, those little improvements that make your city look better, those parks that are better. When people want to come here, they want to play here. And I know we got bad weather right for six months of the year it's 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 crappy it is what it is but for six months of the year we have the best weather on earth and we can capitalize on stuff like that right. we're looking at developing and opening up new streets we have to improve our infrastructure and i want to expand it all the way to the bypass so you guys now most people know that our water lines and our sewer lines don't go all the way to the bypass so when people have to develop and people want to come in uh for example in the north end by the golf course or near the golf course south uh, south of the bypass right there's no infrastructure all the way up there. So people don't want to spend the money, risk all their money, right? Spend all the money to bring the water line all the way out there. So we have to work on things like that that are going to do and improve our infrastructure, put it in for businesses to come in, and then improve the way our city looks. And just more than anything, it's our parks, and it's a type of service. It has to be a safe city. And so that will eventually bring people more in, uh, come in, it'll help people, uh, encourage people to come here. 
And, you know, it's kind of like a, a cycle that kind of like self-perpetuating, like it'll continue to improve on its own, right. but you have to do a few things. I mean, and so we have a lot of ideas. We just don't have the money. And so, yes, yeah. everybody says, oh, you guys go get grants. Well, guess what? Every city in the country is doing the same thing. And we're competing. I just talked to the folks on West Morning. They were they went into the next round of grants. They're competing with folks from Kentucky, from folks from Florida, with folks from Florida. So people think that, you know, oh yeah, it's easy to do that. Yeah, yeah, it might be. And you can spend so many and land one grant here and there, but that is not the solution for everything. We need more tax revenue. We need to improve the service in the city of Broadway. We need to improve the way it looks. We need to invest in that little downtown. We need to invest in our infrastructure. And we we need to bring in some good, good parks. We already have a lot of parks. Right. Or, you know, per citizen, square footage of park space per mem- per citizen is pretty high. But we need to make these parks better. And I think we can do that. Uh, there's a real opportunity. We just need to pass this tax measure, and there's going to be a lot more of that, I think. Okay. I'm really glad you're here to explain it because my answer would have been, just build it in and out. It's working over there. <laughs> but, but like you said, a lot goes into it. So Yeah, we don't, we don't see what goes on in the background. You know, so I'll, I'll, uh, give, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, me coming from LA, and then I see I see all these businesses leaving California, right? All these warehouses are leaving California, and it's just like, why can't we bring those warehouses here to the valley, to Brawley, when um, our, our taxes are a little cheaper than than LA County, Riverside County? It's just like, and that would bring more jobs to our city. Yeah, I mean, like again, there's got to be an industry, right? And it's all strategic. For example, you know, the Travel America's coming in. You know, people are like, uh, you know, oh, you know, is that the right location? We don't need to tra- Travel America. Well, guess what? We If they're zoned for it, they have every right to be there. But we as a city are not going to convince them just, you know, right. just because we say, please come here. They're going to do their due diligence. They're going to spend a lot of money to study the area, traffic patterns, how many people are coming in now. How can they capture most of this traffic and how can they cap, you know, maximize their profit? Right. And so they're doing their homework. Um, what the city can do, it's a lot of, there's a lot of different ways. You can get creative with financing, with public private partnerships. Uh, the infrastructure is a big deal. You know, access to services is a big deal. That's one, uh, for example, in the North End, uh, you're talking about the lithium industry mm-hmm. and you have Calipad and Westmoreland who are, you know, the infill is starting to, to happen. You know, all the empty lots are starting to fill in. People are moving in. But they're not set up for long-term growth yet. You know, they don't have room. And we're talking about capacity in your sewer, water. You have to be able to provide all those things for anybody to come here, right? And Brawley's set up for that. This was done many, many years ago. And the previous people on council and city managers and whatnot have paired up the city to be in this position. Okay. So we're set up for that. We just need to connect all those lines. We need the rest of the infrastructure. But it's uh-huh. coming little by little. And so Brawley is set up for that. And I want to make sure that we have everything, all the services needed and that we can provide them mm-hmm. without any hiccups um, so that they will come. And uh-huh. so that's that's part of it. I have a question. Um, I love that we have two um, fire stations now. Yeah. And we have the, the bridge and the, the other way around. Yeah. But you think in some way that hurt some of the businesses? Since they can, they have the option to go around now, instead of before throwing like through town and you saw so many snowbirds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, when they say you know, you know, once it goes, once it goes around, it goes around. So it killed, it killed a lot of the smaller businesses, a lot of the little restaurants, um, you know. And so, but there's also an opportunity, right? When you look at what's coming through, uh, we've discussed. I was obviously a cannabis ordinance, which I hope that we can make. You know, the community has to accept it. Hopefully we can set that up. You have to catch all that traffic going by, and there's a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And Westmoreland, look, they got smart. They put a gas station, a travel center, right at the entrance mm-hmm. of Westmoreland. And that's done, you know, pretty good for their budget. And so there's a lot of ways that you can capitalize with that. But there are communities that are doing different things. Um, you know, and, and you know what, I this is the one thing that does piss me off about politicians is they say, oh, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I can do. This is what I know. Uh, come on, BS. The solution is already out there. Somebody's already done this. Um, you know what I mean? That Somebody already invented the wheel. Part of my job now is to go out there and find it and see what could pro- possibly work here and work with my council members and city management to apply what's been done in other areas at what's, what's worked, right? 
And I, I this is one thing, like, we were doing the forum, right? We're all talking, and I'm listening to so much stuff these guys are saying. And I'm like, yes, it sounds good. Those are good sound bites, but they're kind of out of touch because that just shows you that they don't really know. And so I sounded like that a while ago. Like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of stuff we can do. But the reality is that something's already been done in the past somewhere else to address issues such as the bypass and this traffic flow not going through your, the center of your town anymore. It did a few things, right? It cleared up our main street. It made it safer. You're, and it's not congested, it's congested now with, you know, with snowbirds or big trucks going through it. Uh, but it also hurt those little businesses. So now we have to look at how do we surround our city with those types of businesses whether we create ordinances or zoning or whatnot, anything that's going to help uh, to make sure that that traffic that was that is going by us now actually stops and spends their money here in the city of Broadway. And so that is right. Last year, last week, I was at the League of Cities, and as we were looking at many other ways of how to manage the city or whatnot, I was looking more at you know how do how do we what who would what little towns have gone through what Broadway went through. And what have they done? And it's interesting to see all the different things that these folks have done. And they brought their, t- their towns back their towns back to life. I mean, look at Coachella. Coachella was a dump 30 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I had family that was like, you know, Brawley was bad. I thought, man, it was like, it made me, you know, appreciate living in Brawley. But you go there now, go there now. Look yeah. at the good things they've done. Coachella has grown a lot. It has yeah. grown a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got, um, I got excited, man, when... Um, you know, right outside of 111, I was like, see, there it is. That's what we needed. There's a warehouse coming in. What happened? Well, that's, again, it's uh, a business that was uh, set on, on, there's developments coming in, right? And they're ready to come in and capitalize on those developments. Right. But when there is a hiccup and if, there, if all their business is dependent on that, well, then they're going to hold off. That's what I mean about... It's, you know, capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. Supply and demand. So they built this big warehouse, and now it's just sitting there because these projects aren't developing and they don't have the contracts. And strategically, it doesn't make sense to put in those, to put in all that machinery. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars to to get this building uh, up to where they need it to be, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're holding off. That's all that's happening. So once these developments get going, and we're talking about like Rancho Los Lagos, who is uh, south of Brawley by the Twin Curbs, right? 1,200 homes, when that comes in, they'll be in there. But we're already looking at it. We're being active with it. And if these folks decide that they're not going to come into town, we're already engaging. We're engaging others. I mean, like I said, uh, people are very skeptical about the lithium industry coming in, but it's coming one way or another. At a certain point, it will come in. And so we're engaging those folks. And we're in, and it was I'm telling you, it was like an hour-long discussion last week with our new city manager about what do we do with that building. I right. mean, does the city buy it? And use it for its own purposes. I mean, <clears throat> we'll figure it out. I was like, Amazon <laughs> Warehouse? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> something, man. Let's, let you, you know, bringing, the, bringing jobs back to Brawley. <laughs> and it's, um, like I said, but I, I, like I said, Rome wasn't built overnight. That's right. Yeah. You know, and it, it is a process. I get it. Um, but yeah, I was just, I, w- I was definitely really wondering what was going on with that building. Yeah, because yeah, he's just sitting there, and I was like, I see the chamisos growing. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I mean, look, yeah. something will come, and we're already looking at it, and we're trying to address that issue. As far as I know, the people that own and that were working with these projects, uh, with this project, uh, the Bensons haven't reached out, haven't said that there's an issue. It's just going to sit there a little longer. I mean, but we got a building in there. What was it before an empty lot, right? Mm-hmm. There's tax revenue coming out and improve the value of that property. And there's there's money coming in for it little by little. Somebody's paying out of pocket, but it's coming in. And our hope is obviously that it, they're you know they're they're in full production real soon and that that place is full of cars. And then the next thing is that everyone's going to be pissed off because there's going to be a lot of traffic and a lot of people stopping at Witted's Ice, you know, after after work. So that'll be our next problem. How do we solve that traffic issue in that area? We'll build another <laughs> Witted's Ice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it goes. There's always an issue, and I. No one's ever gonna be happy, and I'm just like, all right, cool. You know, as long as you gotta literally think about it. As long as the complaints are petty, people are upset about the condition of the roads. That means that everything else isn't too bad, right? And I know everybody was pissed off about all the kids that were acting up. He's all these COVID teenagers, man. Like, you know, they were like 11 years old when they were shut during the lockdown. 
Right. And now, like, we let them onto society and they're just acting like maniacs. But what people forget is that if you go back to when we were youngsters, right, what mm-hmm. Brawley was like. I mean, I was from the projects and I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And that place was crazy, man. And I saw, you know, you know, they got those, you know, overdosing and, you know, or dead at a certain point, frozen and <laughs> just spending all night there uh, in the winter nights. And so to me, it's it's not that it's not important, but it's that I've seen much, much worse. And I understand that this comes in waves in small communities like ours. Then eventually they grow up, you know, right? Or yeah. they get in so much trouble that they go away. That's not what I want to see. I just want to see them stop and grow up, right, and behave. And so that's where we're at. We've had a tough year, um, and I'm, and I'm, but I'm glad that that these issues are not what they could be and what they are in other communities. And so we're addressing them. And like I said, during the last forum, and we're dealing with kids here, and people want us to be posting, like, we busted this kid, we put him in jail. We're dealing with minors. Minors, we have to protect their privacy. Mm-hmm. And we have to, you know, be careful how we address those issues. But they're minors. Just minors out there fighting at Johnny's. I, can, uh-huh. I mean, just think about how many times we got in a fight at Johnny's. And this was junior high. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I t- I've, t- I've told my son some stories. He's just like, he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, we won't talk about it. But yeah, yeah, there, there, were, there, were some, there were some big fights, definitely big fights, you know. But um, how are we dealing with the fentanyl issue, man? So, you know, fentanyl, I mean, it is what it is. We have, we are a corridor, right? A drug trafficking corridor it comes into Mexico. Fentanyl coming in real cheap out of China, making its way into Mexican ports. And then making its way into the United States. We've had a lot of big busts. But think about, you know, those tiny little pills and what it takes to, you know, to smuggle those across. Right. And so, yeah, we busted. We had some big busts over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, I, I get the reports of how many people are dying in the city and what they're dying of. Right. And uh, we're not looking at any reports of, you know, where it was peaking a couple of years ago. Where a lot of people were dying on this. It seems to have uh, waned off a little bit. So it's kind of not as as you know not happening as often as not not happening as often as it used to mm-hmm. as it was a couple of years ago but nevertheless it's a real problem and i think awareness and the things that we're doing right now to address it where i mean people are getting busted i mean and you know and i tell people all the time like hey you know I, you know i get it right i come from the old school you know you don't snitch but think about it like these drugs are killing or not 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 like the, yeah it's killing some salt dogs right some people have been on drugs for a long time but they're it's killing kids it's yeah. killing those ones that are trying it for the first time because they don't have the built-up tolerance to, to take in these drugs so you know what i get it but you know put it in an anonymous call and, yeah. and let us know who's doing this and unfortunately that's what it's going to take and i hate to sound like that guy but that's what it takes right because you know it, it makes you we need to uh, keep our kids safe man I mean, it makes you a little bit uncomfortable coming from our background to be like yeah you need to call and tell us but this is killing our kids yeah i mean if if I knew that I could stop some of my kids my kid from dying you know tomorrow and I could do something today, I mean if I you know I I'd, I'd go to prison in order to make that happen and it's as simple as making a phone call, mm-hmm. so why not you know it's happening right now, yeah. and so unfortunately that's the kind of world that we're living in and we got to do something to protect our children so, yeah absolutely man dude make that call, okay, all right man sorry I'm trying to bring you guys down I know it's more boring than usual and. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, man. It's more informative. It is because you know, like so I the, said, these are the topics sometimes that people don't want to bring up. <laughs> and that is true. And most people don't want to discuss. They'll be like, "Oh, what's being handled?" Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, these are tough issues. And you think about it, like this year, I've not been the mayor. That I'm the mayor. Like it's just we've had a lot of kids die on our, you know, in the city. We had you know a lot of overdoses. We've had uh, you know a couple of crazies out on the street just shooting random at random you know folks. Um, but all in all, you know, it's you got to consider and compare it to anywhere else. Yes, work on the issues, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you shouldn't look around and be like, hey, how bad are we? And overall, we're not that bad. I mean, it's so, like I said, people, you know, it is what it is. And they, people should be voice, uh, vocal about it. They should voice their opinion and should let us know what we're doing wrong or what we're doing right would be nice as well, right? Sometimes, hey... This was a good decision. Hey, we like where they're going with this. <laughs> I would like to hear that sometimes, by the way. Anybody watching this, it feels good when they say, hey, you, that was good. Right. And so, you know, I mean, last year we had, um, you know, my, my one of my colleagues decided to put in 
our uh, Pride Month, uh, and you know we we didn't we didn't do it here in the city of Broadway. We didn't vote on it because they didn't have a second. And people were really like genuinely upset with me, and they were like, "What are you gonna do? What are you, gonna, and I, you know what? If the community doesn't want it, then we'll leave it alone." It doesn't mean that I don't accept people for who they are, because I do. You know, I don't care. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not, as long as it's all consensual, right? As long as you're not, you know, raping kids or stealing from people or anything like that. Uh, you live your life how you want to live it, brother. I'm not the one to judge, but, you know, um, but, you know, do we need to, you know, do a Pride Month in the city of Broadway for that? Most of the people who are gay in our community said, hey, you know what, just we're good man just leave us let us be right and i respected that so some people were real upset at me i almost got canceled or maybe i still will get canceled it's it's, <laughs> it's brawly how me how can you really cancel me and bro <laughs> <So. laughs> but yeah um so we have code enforcement now yeah so what's um what's our what's our plans with code enforcement Enforce our codes. <laughs> I, yeah. So uh, the first thing I did is I asked our, one, we needed to fund the position, and we did. And so, two, I asked, uh, you know, they have a plan. Obviously, our, our police chief, our interim city manager, Jimmy Duran, has a plan. But bringing her in was just like, we're getting the low-hanging fruit right now, right? But we're also reviewing all of our ordinances to see which ones are strong enough and which ones have some bite and what we can enforce. And we're looking at stuff like the Cook's Market. Uh, some of the old abandoned buildings that burned down, you know, 15 years ago that we right. haven't addressed. And so people are like, hey, you're not doing anything. We well, kind of are. We mm -hmm. are, but it's a process, right? It takes a while. You got to get attorneys involved. You got to you gotta issue war like warning letters. And, you, and you'd be surprised. A lot of times we're already engaging with the property owners. They're already starting yeah. the process. But even for them, if you're going, it takes months. Hey, that's a perfect timing. Uh, I was going to ask you what's going to happen with that building. And then I thought jokingly turn it into a bar but that's what we did with the last two things that burned <laughs> and it worked out pretty good right <laughs> i mean we we do uh we're pretty healthy drinkers around here right? yeah. <laughs> so it probably would work <laughs> it might be profitable as well <laughs> right i mean look at 805 i mean i saw Spazzing. the business okay. i mean look people tell me that things aren't working in probably 805 i think they bought that property for you know less than a hundred thousand dollars and it was listed for a couple million dollars uh, recently so yeah, they put money into it and a lot of work into it. Have they put $2 million? I mean, in my professional opinion, I don't think they have. They put in a pretty good amount of money, but it didn't all come out of pocket. It came out of profits, right? So they're doing well. Uh, Sophia's restaurant is doing well. Inferno keeps complaining. The owner complains all the time, but they seem to be <laughs> still going, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy, I mean, he comes to council and he can. They got their regulars, man. Yeah, they got their supporters. I mean, you know what I mean? They do their thing and. I mean, these businesses are moving, they're going, and it's encouraging other mo businesses to move in. And so the market will dictate when it's too many of them, they will slow down and some of them will close down. Uh, and we gotta we have to get creative and find other things to do with it. We don't all, we're not all, all always drinking and brawling. There's other things that we can do. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's a fun way to live, I mean, my opinion. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we can do. We have to get creative. We have to find th ways that people are going to, I mean, but think about it. How many times have you seen people invest the little bit of money that they have without any clear understanding of how to run a business, how to promote it, oh, yeah. how to keep people engaged, how to yes. keep people, get people to come in the door and not just come in the door, but come back. And so a lot of times, you know, just because your tia can cook and make some mean tacos doesn't mean that, you know, that she can run a business. So those are some things that I'm proposing right now currently um, that we do uh, bring in. Uh, we're, looking, we're bringing in a, an individual for economic development, economic development specialist. And some of the things that I want to put on are courses, or even if we can get you a membership even for online training to someone outside of the city, it doesn't oh, matter. That's dope. Yeah. To show you how to, like, for example, you guys have seen my wife's, uh, Natalie, her, her marketing, right? Mm -hmm. She's a guru at this, but she didn't become great at her, doing, at her marketing by just kind of playing around with it. She sits in a lot of training through her... Uh, the brokers that she works with and has perfected that art of managing social media, you know, Instagram and Facebook. And you, you might not believe it, but off of those engagements, you know, those, you know, 10,000 views, you might get one or two clients. Yeah. And so that helps. And so 
when you look at some of these businesses coming in and if they're, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the world has changed. You no longer pass out flyers all over the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? You use social media and that's where you're going to engage and get the most bang for your buck. So I want to show folks how to do that. Recently, I started diving into AI and how to use it. Uh, bro, <laughs> that's a whole nother level. A whole yeah, nother you know level. what I mean? That's a whole nother world. You guys are related. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because um, cause this is like, me and Jed, I sat down and was like, okay, we got to take this to the next level. AI, bro. Right. And same thing, I took some marketing classes, bro. Online, I paid for the courses, and I, I gained so much knowledge, right? And I'm using it towards the podcast. Mm-hmm. And we've we've seen a we've seen a, a good jump. Hey, just careful because he's gonna ask you to donate next. Right? <laughs> it's the community. <laughs> Are you hiring? <laughs> oh wow! Hey, that was a better one. That's even better. You want money? Or you, so what? Take your money instead. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, and like I said, when it comes to AI, it's just um, it's just a whole different beast. Chat GPT, man. Chat GPT. Ooh. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one too. It's just like. Well, I don't know. Why don't we just ask Chat GPT and Well, and I, you know, I, you know what? I don't like honestly. Do I need Chat GPT to write up my speeches? No, not really. I can write up some pretty good stuff and then you know make it sound like me. But instead of sitting there six hours, you know, trying to type it up and breaking you know my breaking my brain, just trying to you know formulate it so that it sounds good, and then practicing learning it, and you know you don't ever learn it one hundred percent. You kind of you go by you know the high you know the the the, the bullet points or whatever. ChatGPT can handle that for you in a matter of seconds, right? So you just save six hours. So now you can spend a couple hours perfecting it and learning it, perfecting it, and making it sound like you versus doing all that extra work. So imagine your marketing. Imagining now there's more than just writing a chat GPT. There's, you know, where they'll create the images, they'll create the content for you, the video, the even the, the background sound and, you know, the everything, the timing, you know, the the... the volume of all the different things happening in the video i mean they'll I, I will create an image i mean you've seen all those where you got your dead you know grandparents talking oh, to you you know yeah, you know yeah. what i mean yeah. hugging you and <laughs> yeah use all that put it all together and if you become a wizard at that you open up a small business uh, there's no reason why it should fail but it will fail if you continue to go word of mouth only pass out some flyers 10 percent discount on you know, super Taco Tuesdays, tacos are only a dollar. It's good if it's Taco Tuesday, if people know about it. So right. those are some of the things that I think we can do in leadership and that the city can truly engage to promote business in Brawley and to help folks be more self-reliant. Teach a man to fish, right? Mm-hmm. He'll eat every day. You give him a fish, whether he had one meal. And so I think that's part of it. I think uh, I want to be more active on that, and I want to spend some of the city money to encourage our businesses to get better at this, get better at managing their businesses, accounting, right? Being able to, you know, uh, manage their books. How to start a podcast. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't give away all the secrets. <laughs> Damn. I mean, we're going to put you guys out of business. Nah. I mean, this is a beautiful thing about being podcasting. You can do this over and over and over, and it'll grow on its own, um, mm-hmm. depending on the guests that you have, right, and what kind of content you're putting out there. But, man, when I did this, I swear to God, this is, like, one of the funnest, happiest times of my life. Um, like I was telling you guys earlier, I think I, um, all borderline or all narcissists love to hear themselves speak. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, yeah. It's, um, sometimes it's, like, a, it's a way out, you know, as far as, like, of your daily, of da- your daily grind. And I, I look at it as therapy. Like, yeah, definitely. It's like, like you said. I mean, it sure is. You can take out, uh, you know, drop the filters. And if you're able to be honest and have an honest conversation on here, I think it's great. I mean, yeah. And I'm going I'm to throw it out there, man. You know, if you feel like, you know, um, our podcast could help you guys help the city in any way, you know, we're, we're more than open and, and you know, to, to give back. Yeah, so. Yeah, I know, absolutely. I do think that you guys should be out there. Uh, one of the things that we did, I think it was back in 2019, we set up for the parade or mariachi night. Uh, it was me, uh, Ernie, and Raymond, and we were out there talking, and uh, it was such a fun event. I don't think we ever put the video out because it was chaotic. It was like our first event. <laughs> um, and, I mean, it was mostly like we talked to a lot of people. But we gave it another, I think, another view of what's happening here in the city of Brawley. 
And if I wasn't an elected official right now, I would have continued to do that. But obviously, you have to, you have to uh, move on, right? And mm-hmm. but I would encourage you guys to get involved with our chamber, uh, who puts on all these events, and even with our city for any city events, and go sit down, man. Just be the narrators, tell the story. Um, but you tell it differently because it's your own channel. You're not affiliated with anybody else. You're able to tell it. You're able to, you know. How I would encourage you guys to go to the chamber. And set up for mariachi night, and you're gonna see what I mean mm. when I tell you that you're gonna have a blast. We set up on a trailer or something. The problem we had is we were sitting around, we were right on the ground, same setup that you have here. Set up on a trailer or something a little higher. You can see the event, and I think these are, are directional mics, right? So it won't catch all around yeah. there. So if you can, if you have that set up, you're gonna be good. It's the problem we had. You know, we had cheap mics. Uh, we try to look professional, like you know, Good Morning America with the little our little mics here on. I mean, <laughs> I picked up some of it. It was. Junk. It's there somewhere in the files. Uh, we saved it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, though, man. It, that was a lot of fun. So I do encourage you guys, and I think you can help that. You promote more things in Brawley. And it also helps you guys, right? Like, who are those guys? You know, last old podcast, all right? You know, let's go up there. And everyone wants to be heard. Everyone wants to be seen. And so there's definitely, for me, like, I would I would advise you guys to do that. And I think it'd be great for both parties, for you guys and for whoever's putting on the event and the event itself. Okay. Oh, use your talents where you know All right. they best apply. <laughs> definitely, man. Definitely. You know. Anything else you want to touch on, man? I mean, you guys didn't ask me anything about me. You just asked me about the city. <laughs> <laughs> you are the city, bro. <laughs> What's going on with Ramon, man? And then that, I see you golfing all the time, bro. <laughs> uh, like you said, I go golfing about three times a year. But you think I'm golfing all the time? Why? Because I'm using social media effectively. Right, um, and it's not just me, but it's all these other people posting, 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 posting. I'm just like, man, this guy's always at the golf course. No, I'm a, I'm a pretty, I'm a horrible golfer. Um, I think I'm good, and I tell everybody I'm good, and I challenge them to go over there, and then by the ninth hole, we're all you had too much to drink that it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can out drink just about anybody, though. That's true, and I can bring you know. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm pretty good. But I, don't oh, remember, yeah. I don't remember a lot of what happens, but I'm here that I'm pretty good. I'm pretty <laughs> that good. says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. Anyway, just kidding. Don't so forget we, to vote. <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff going on. As you guys know, uh, me and my buddy Daniel Nunez opened a brewery in Central Mexico, in San Luis yes. Potosí. So Cerro Seriate Brujas is already up and running. We are still in the process of building a warehouse. We already bought the equipment. We invested quite a bit of money. Uh, we had some events going. August was a very busy month. Uh, the, the brewery made money. And we have a young partner up there, uh, uh, Joe, uh, who is managing everything. He is the majority owner. We are investors. Uh, but certainly I enjoy going out there. One of, the, one of my favorite experiences is going to different breweries, mm-hmm. especially the big ones, You know, tasting all their beer, not just some of it, as much as I can taste. And then obviously getting to know, and this is like a brotherhood. Once you get into the brewing business, you know, you start to meet people, manufacturers, you got brewers, suppliers, and it just becomes, it's a one big brotherhood. And it's interesting when I go, I visited the Ensenada Beer Fest this last uh, March, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was just walking around. The people that were with me were like, how do you know all these people? And I was like, that, because I'm a brewer now. <laughs> I'm not, I don't brew. I don't know how to brew. I know how yeah. to taste beer and drink beer. Um, and I also know where the money's at. So I'm chasing it. Um, and so, but yeah, it was like just running into people. Everybody, I'm all, you know, it's like, like be, we've known each other for a lifetime, but it's like a different type of brotherhood. So, uh, so far, we've had some uh, people, uh, they want to invest. We're not ready for investors yet. Um, but my goal is to, uh, we had a five year plan and we're two years into it, is to have our own uh, Mexican lager distributed here in California. That's what so, I was just going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. So I do plan, I do want to open a, bring in our beer and kegs and bottle it here in Brawley. Okay. And begin to distribute and start in Imperial County, specifically in Brawley, right? This is my this is my house, and, and we're always talking about economic development, and we're going to open a business. Well, why don't you start here in your own hood? And so that's that's the idea. And obviously, to open up a brewery in Brawley, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money and a lot, a lot of risk. And honestly, it's not money that I have that I can risk. And so... See, that Cook's building's looking really good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. I mean, there's something that can be done with it. That would actually be a perfect place for a large yep. a large brewery. And I think that it would work. It all depends on how much they want for it. So yep. I'll yeah. take it like that. If they offer me for $40,000 like that, I'll take it. I'll buy it, and I'll clean it up. But they got to let me have it for 40000 
the cleanup <laughs> will be about the same amount, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and we also got, so we got a bunch of stuff. Natalie's business is going good. My little businesses are going good. Uh, we recently, I went ahead and became a contractor as an electrician. So oh. we're electrical contractors now, and I think we'll be fully operational by the end of the year. And so it was like little by little, just kind of building on all the things that we learned over the years. And, you know, I posted something the other day that like, to me is like really cool. Um, I remember where you wanted to be and have what you have right now. Where you wanted to be where you're at now and to have what you have now. And I just think back, you know, a block from here from your house, you know, when I was there growing up in the projects. Mm-hmm. And on all the times that I was hungry and all the times that I, I felt that the world, you know, hated me and wanted, you know. And we felt like there's no way out. You know, it's like, you know, I tell every kid, everybody around me, it's patience. It's one foot in front of the other. In the Marine Corps, to get long distances, you focus on the next step, one foot in front of the other. And so I say that to a lot of, talk to a lot of kids now, a lot of young men, uh, for some reason feel like, you know, that I could be somebody that they could give them some decent advice. And I was telling like, be clear on what you want. And if you don't, like, if you're doing something, you're not happy then move on. Don't waste a lot of time with it. Don't don't say like, oh, I already put $10,000 into it. You know, cut your losses because sometimes you're going to spend another $30,000 on and three or four more years trying to develop something that isn't going to work because you want, you don't like it. It doesn't make you happy. Move on from it quickly. Uh, when you find what makes you happy, give it everything you have and be patient with yourself and be patient with the process. And more than anything, try to enjoy the process, getting to the next level taking that next step, enjoy every bit of it, and know that it's yours. I mean, I work for myself, and, you know, when I go work for somebody else, they treat me good. <laughs> Everywhere I go nowadays, they treat me good. I don't know why, but I'm treated I'm treated good. And I don't like it. I don't care. You can treat me like, a, you know, treat me like, a, you know, I'm the, 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 you know, the king of England, and it's still not good enough for me. I'm not fulfilled because I know what it's like to be on your own and working for yourself. And developing and doing those things that you want for yourself. And so that's what makes me happy. Even though I'm stressed out, I'm losing my hair. I don't know if you guys notice. Oh. <laughs> I'm going a little bald. It's thinning out now. But uh, my forehead got about three inches bigger and higher. <laughs> but uh, that's the process. And I'm enjoying it. And I'm loving it. And I hope that in three years' time that we're here drinking my beer. Uh, my brand. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Sponsored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and we could, and we could. We could actually do something a little sooner. As soon as we're ready to import, uh, we'll probably sponsor a couple of your gigs. You just let me know how much. Hey, you guys are both just business, business, business. <laughs> That's you guys forget your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, one of the things is you got to start surrounding yourself with people who think like you. Or who people who are where you want to be. Driven. People who are going where you're going. Um, often, and I'm not saying don't kick, like, you got to love the people that love you, you know, love them back. Right. But you also got to focus on this stuff. Where are you headed and what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. And so you got to surround yourself with people that want to do those same things. So um, I always say, you know, go for it. Like, right now, this is a perfect example. It's sponsoring. You want to do this. You want to do that. You want to, you know. Yeah. How do we support each other? And that's how the most successful people in this country and the world, as a matter of fact, have managed to get to where they're at, especially those that come from the bottom like we do have managed to get to where they're at is not because there's some sort of geniuses or uh, some are, right? But most is because of their network. It's who they know, you know, and who they're able to, able to rely on when they need, need to, right? And if you don't ask, you will never know. Yeah, that's another thing. You just be bold and don't be disappointed if people say no. It's not, it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, think about how many times you had to ask, you know, your wife out on a date before she said okay. <laughs> and then, you know, it was worth it, right? I don't, you know, at least yeah. to me, you know, I just, I asked, uh, you know, my wife, she was younger, too pretty for me. And, you know, she had her whole future in front of me and in front of me, in front of her and, you know, and in front of me too. You know. <laughs> but I kept asking her out, she would say no, you know, but when she finally said yes, it was, it was worth the effort. And so anyways, that's, that's, I'm going off <laughs> subject now. In the words of anybody, Sky, keep up the fight. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, uh, so it's only audio, right? You can't see that. Oh, shit. You can't see what I'm wearing? Oh, oh man. Sorry, Ernie. Oh, sorry, Ernie. <laughs> we had no idea. We had no idea he was going to wear this shirt. <laughs> Can you, you can't even see what I'm wearing. No, you can't see it. He'll know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll know. And he makes some cool shirts, too, but this one's pretty cool. It's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, <laughs> see it. just, yeah. Delta in the uh, Lima Park strap. 
Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so those who, you know, who know, know, right? <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah, sorry, Ernie. I love you, brother. But, you know, I can, all so, you so one thing, you know, off subject and everything, one thing that has been taken off on our TikTok videos and, you know, YouTube is ghost stories, man. Ghost do, stories? Yeah. Do you, do you, have you encountered, encountered any spiritual or, you know, any, any activity in your life? <laughs> yeah, man. I ran into all kinds of funky stuff in my life and I, I, ref, I refuse to believe it because I just think it's my imagination. But, but it's, it's not. It's not. There's too much coincidence. You know what? Just the other day it happened in my house and I haven't told my wife. I'm not going to tell anyone, but I'll tell you guys. Uh, so something's been, we've been, I've been feeling something. Uh, in one specific sp- uh, part of the house. And so the other day I was walking, and it says, right before I get up to my stairs and up, to, you've been to my house, right? You got to come through like that entry room, and then you turn around and go up the stairs. Or right in that area, I always get goosebumps and kind of getting them right now. And so the other day, uh, I can cuss on your podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the other day I'm walking in, and I have a, you know, I feel like, if you can handle something in this world, you can handle it in the next, and vice versa, right? And uh, so I'm walking, and I felt my skin just crawl, right? Like, my hair, all the hair stood up, and I'm walking, and we have this, like, wooden, uh, I don't know, like, just those little skinny tables that go up against the wall, you know, for, like, decor or whatever BS you put it up there. And I'm walking, and, and I'm getting towards that table, and I feel my body, like, like if something went through me, right? And I'm all, get the fuck away from me. And immediately I walked by, there was a water bottle sitting on there, and it flew right off of the table. And I was like, oh, I, just, I ran upstairs. I got, <laughs> I got under my blankets, and I just, oh. Wow. So I came wow. down, and I said a prayer the next day, and, and it, I haven't seen it. And, and so I believe in prayer. It works. Oh, no wonder he didn't want water earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's, but, it, but, yeah, all over, over my lifetime, I've seen a lot of stuff. I know many years ago. Uh, there was a, a young man that was killed in my house. Uh, I think I was like 14 years old. And uh, my little sister, when she was young, she was like my baby, right? She was always with me. And she was tired and she, you know, we were all stressed out over what had happened in the house. And so I said, lay down on my bed and my sister lay down in my arm. She put her head in my arm and we fell asleep. And and I was woken up in the middle of the night. And it was like, hey, sorry for what happened. And... Um, take care of your little sister and take care of your brother. They're going to need you. And he was like, never go away. They're always going to need you. And I was like, ah, I got to be dreaming. Right. And so I'm like, I went back to sleep the next day. I woke up and all that, that was real. It was as real as can be. I mean, I was having this conversation with this young man who I was close to, right. He was older than me. He was in his twenties, but I was, you know, 14 and he was somebody that I looked up to, uh, because, you know, he was a good person, even though he was, you know, he was messing his own life up. He was a good person in general. If you approached him and you needed his help, he would give you what he had. He'd give you the shirt off his back to help you. So anyways, this is, I mean, that's the first experience I had. I was about 14 years old. And then over the years, yeah, I've seen a lot of other crazy stuff. And it disappeared, right? It's right. freaky. And I refuse to believe it, though. Still to this day, it's not real. <laughs> Un- unexplainable things, yeah. I, I well, that's understandable because they say if you, like, invite it, it tends to follow you. Yeah, that's what my wife says. She's like, stop looking at that stuff. And I do look at TikTok. I watch all the scary videos. And just that's how I go to sleep watching that stuff. <laughs> no, pues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just winding down, bro. So these got to clear my mind, right? And what is it? What clears your mind faster than being terrified, right? <laughs> is there any haunted places in Brawley, bro? Any what? Haunted places in Brawley? I've heard about a lot of them. Uh, the old, uh, the old uh, what was the old uh, Planners Hotel? Right. Uh, there's a place in the Elks, uh, the Elks building downstairs below. Um, and uh, just the other day, we had the state of the city, and uh, our Denise, who is took care of the of the party stuff and the chairs and whatnot, they set up the chairs right. And you know, sometimes the chairs that were standing too tall, you know, they could, one could fall over. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, they heard a noise, and she did the same type of comment that I did, like, "Hey, leave us alone. We're working." And then one of the chairs tipped over, pause, <laughs> and then it was like a second one, pause, a pause, then another one. It was like somebody just doing it on purpose. I go, really? Pause, pause, pause. And then they weren't, but what she told me is that they weren't standing upright, that they were leaning. 
mm-hmm. and they were all leaning, right? And so what would happen is when they're leaning too much, they'll slide, their feet will slide under, and they'll just fall flat. Right. But on this one, they were tipped over, and they said all of a sudden, oh, they shit. all went. <laughs> and they're not the first one. It's been caught on video. Uh, so they have security cameras down there. They have caught these images down there. And so, they're, yeah, there's <laughs> that's the one that I... We want those images. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go talk, go talk. No, 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 keep them over there. <laughs> yeah, go talk to Richie over there. He's the one that, he's seen them. And they yeah, they're, we've seen them. Yeah, they're, they're kind of creepy. Damn. So that, that's Alex. That's one of them. And I don't know. There are plenty of others, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely, man. But, um, well, Ramon, thank you for coming on, man. I know busy schedule and we appreciate you taking the time to, you know, yeah, I know. take some time out of that busy schedule for us, man. We definitely appreciate it. I, Thank you. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. Um, and I do apologize, right, that I had to reschedule and I'm, yeah, I am pretty busy. Um, and I'm also sorry that I bored you guys, you know, the laughter that we usually get. So, um, but we had some serious and good, uh, uh, topics I think to discuss. I think that's important. Yeah. And, uh, Maybe next time it'll be more fun. <laughs> definitely, man. Definitely. But, um, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the way, this weird this setup is kind of weird because I feel like I need to talk to you guys. And I keep... <laughs> so, oh, no. Like, the voters right there. Yeah. It's like going right on a date with two girls at the same time. It's two hot girls. What are you talking oh, about? Yeah. 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 Two yeah. gordi buenas, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, you uh, uh, say gordi my buddy. He's the king of the tortas, you know. He, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he loves that. We'll see what he says. Don't post that. Or we're going to post it anyways, but yeah, don't highlight it. <laughs> don't highlight it. All he right. might be mad at We're going to make a couple of reels out of it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, but I do appreciate you guys. And, you know, I love hanging out with you guys. And uh, anytime you guys have an open slot, bring me on. We'll talk We'll talk about what's going on in Broadway. Definitely, man. Sure. Thank you. All right, man. All right. All right. Don't forget to vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>